Hey there! I'm Connor, I'm Off The Cuff, and today I am talking to you about Triple Nine. Triple Nine is John Hillcoat's uh, directorial follow-up to Lawless from 2012, and uh, it stars Casey Affleck, Chiwetel Ejiofor, Anthony Mackie, Woody Harrelson, Aaron Paul, Norman Reedus, uh, Gal Gadot, Kate Blanchett, uh, no, <laughs> Kate Winslet, and uh, Clifton Collins Jr., uh, along with other people, and it's about a group of bank robbers who pull a job, and they're going to be pulling another job. And a lot of subplots arise, a lot of uh, people knowing each other, a lot of people knowing certain things, a lot of um, cloak and dagger. It's basically a crime saga. And so, what do I think of a Triple Nine? Um, I just want to say that this movie's successes uh, are largely due to director John Hillcoat and his style and what he brings to the table. I think the police procedural stuff here is really cool. I really think uh, the investigation scenes, the the robberies too are really cool. And uh, there's like this one scene um, where the, they're doing a um, an apartment room by room room by room raid that was very effective. And I think this movie has a very sure-handed first act. I, I really like the way this movie got started. Um, so many um, like characters, a lot of characters in the movie, uh, a lot of relationships, certain people knowing each other, certain people knowing certain things that they're not telling, uh, they're telling some people, but they're not telling others. It was very well handled. And I thought that it ultimately um, progressed and set things up in a very natural way um, that could have come off as very convoluted. Um, but they did a very good job. Um, and I think the cast is really good here, too. Casey Affleck is awesome. Uh, he is really becoming one of my favorite uh, actors right now. Uh, everything he's doing is really cool. And he kind of has a similar acting style he does in all of his, uh, his, in all of his uh, movies. But he's such a subdued presence. He's very good uh, acting with his face and with his body. And you know, what he's saying is really secondary to what he's uh, giving physically to his performance. Um, I really also like Chiwetel Ejiofor. He's always great. Uh, Anthony Mackie, it's always good to see him. We get people like Woody Harrelson, though. I, I think he was a little too over the top. He really wasn't that much of a character. He was just this, whoa, goofy, kind of crazy police chief, captain, investigator, or whatever. Uh, he's always on drugs. Oh, this is getting to him. And then uh, we have Aaron Paul uh, and Kate Winslet and Gal Gadot. And those people, I mean, I don't think they gave bad performances by any means, but they could have been cut from the movie entirely. Uh... Honestly, their subplots were pretty expendable. Um, and that's kind of where the problems really start to come in. The setups and premises for these subplots and the main story, it's all strong. But when the movie really starts to slow down and becomes about these characters and their subplots, it really deflates because these characters are really blank. All these characters are really here for are vessels to move this story along and to really get things going. So when the movie stops to become about the characters, the movie's got nothing to do and you become very bored because these characters are very uninteresting. I mean, at one point Casey Affleck goes home and of course he's he's got a kid and Teresa Palmer for some reason is in this movie. I don't know why they even had to cast that role. But it's, uh, we don't really care about him or his family. Just showing us his family is not us caring. Um, and then... We get into the second half, and the whole framing device of this movie is there was a heist, there's going to be another heist. We don't know when that other heist is coming. We don't. And so a lot of this movie is characters saying, when this heist happens, we got to prepare by doing this. But we never know when that heist is coming, and they're not really doing a whole lot to prepare. So we have no idea when this thing is going to happen. Is it going to be the climax? Is the climax going to happen after the heist? What's happening? So... That became very frustrating as it came along, and uh, kept ask, I kept asking, where is this going? When is this going to like be about something again? And then we get to Act 3, and Act 3 is a complete rush. Characters know things out of the blue. Characters will just appear places that they shouldn't be in a matter of seconds. Like, there'll be one character talking on the phone at a certain location, and then later in that scene, they're in a place they couldn't have possibly gotten into. Um, and it really made... And then certain subplots just completely fizzle out. There was an entire subplot with Kate Winslet. She is the head of a Russian Jewish mafia. And that is very important to the robbers and their subplot. 
and it all of a sudden just completely fizzles out and the entire ending of this movie is hugely unsatisfying which is a real bummer because this movie started out strong if only this movie ended in a, in a natural way as it began it would have been so much better honestly if this movie ultimately focused more on its character the script focused more on its characters and fleshing them out and you know let this uh, let this story play out in a natural way i would have sat for 15 20 heck even a half an hour longer just to see this movie be <laughs> have have a better story but as it stands triple nine is a pretty disappointing movie not entirely bad uh, you can definitely feel a lot of influence, like you can feel heat, you can definitely feel the Dark Knight in this movie. Um, but in the end, I'm going to give Triple Nine a 5 out of 10. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm Connor. See you later.